Hello and welcome again to all those HL Chemistry students from around the world, wherever you are, from Shanghai to Santiago, San Francisco to Sydney, and not forgetting all of my friends in New Zealand, all the way down from South Island in New Zealand, all the way up to British Columbia in Canada. On Monday morning, of course, you'll be taking the all important paper two. Two and a half hours of fun chemistry. It's going to stretch you, of course, but you'll be ready if you have your calculator. If you take some time to look over the data booklet, then of course you spend the rest of your weekend practicing, practicing, practicing with all of those problems. Inevitably, HL chemistry stands apart from SL chemistry because of all of the mathematical calculations. But today, we are going to go in and look at how to solve some problems on the Gibbs free energy. But before we do that, I want to give a special shout out to all of our students here at ACS Abu Dhabi taking the HL chemistry exam on Monday. We know you had Miss Mack and she's done a great job with you guys. I just want to wish all of you the best of luck in Monday's examination. But the content of this video is dedicated more to my students currently in year one. I know I'm going to be leaving you guys at the end of this year, but please let's stay in touch and look out for my video next year when we get to the exams. And of course, this week, we are going to focus on the content in this lesson. And last and certainly not least, to my class of 2025. You guys, I know I can't be outside the exam hall to wish everyone well on Monday morning. I wasn't there on Friday, but I've been thinking of you guys, wishing you the best, sending you the energy and this lesson is especially dedicated to IB class of 25 CIS Bangalore. Let's move in and take a closer look. And today we look at reactivity 1.4 entropy and spontaneity which is an HL topic. Five hours dedicated to this and of course that's for us to get some context, get some idea as to what's happening in the topic and to spend some time practicing, practicing, practicing with problems, using the data booklet, getting familiar with our calculator and understanding all of the little tricks that we can be exposed to in the IB exam. So here, first up, we get an understanding of what is entropy and how it connects to the Gibbs free energy. Of course, it loops back and builds upon our knowledge of enthalpy. We need to remember what's an exothermic and what's an endothermic reaction. And then we will realize that some reactions are spontaneous only under certain conditions. So let's move in and take a closer look. And here in this simple world, the temperature is 273 Kelvin. You should know that that is zero degrees Celsius. The sun is out and we have a block of ice. So my first question to you is, what's going to happen to our block of ice? Is it going to melt or is it going to stay put as is? Mr. Gibbs here in his boat though, he's pretty confident that free energy will get my boat home. And you see his little house over here with the palm tree and his house right here. You might wonder how could he have the palm tree when there's a block of ice over there. But that is not the purpose of our discussion. Remember, we have created this hypothetical world. And in this hypothetical world, it's 273 Kelvin, a block of ice up there, house with a palm tree, and Mr. Gibbs in his boat saying that he's going to get home because of free energy. So, if it is that Mr. Gibbs is thinking that this block of ice is going to somehow melt, the water is going to come down here and fill up this area, lift his boat and he'll get home. That is certainly plausible, but it's not going to happen, Mr. Gibbs. It's not happening at this temperature. This melting of this ice is simply not going to happen. You see, to go from solid to liquid, that requires the input of energy to break bonds to make this process happen. And we have already described that process as endothermic 
and giving it a positive delta H. You know, bond breaking requires energy and it's endothermic. So how exactly are you going to get the energy to break those bonds, to melt the ice, to get you home? And we already know from our experience that that energy is not available at zero degrees Celsius because our block of ice is going to stay put. Once the temperature is low enough, ice will not melt. But what if this happens and the temperature goes up by 10 degrees Celsius or 10 Kelvin to 283? Then the block of ice could possibly begin to melt. Notice here our sun's gotten a little bit hotter. And in time, this block of ice would begin to melt. If you want to try it yourself, you can get a block of ice and put it at 10 degrees Celsius. Observe it and you'll see that it will eventually melt. But bonds are being broken. And where is the energy for that bond breaking coming from? It's coming from the surroundings, which is fairly hot. As that happens, actually, the temperature of 283 Kelvin in our little hypothetical model here would actually begin to fall because bond breaking requires energy and that energy is going to come from the surroundings into the block of ice and energy is added in here. That's why we say it's endothermic and we say bond breaking requires energy. So in time, the ice melts and Mr. Gibbs says, yay, I am home as the ice begins to melt. Water comes into this area here. The boat begins to rise. And Mr. Gibbs is excited that his boat is going to get up here and he's going to be able to push it in there and get home. Bond breaking requires energy and this endothermic process is happening now because energy is being taken in from the surroundings. And of course, our temperature here should be dropping just a bit below 283. It all depends on the size of our hypothetical world and a lot of other calculations which are not of importance to us right now, but we know that it's an endothermic process. The temperature of the environment will drop as the system takes energy in to break bonds. But how exactly is Mr. Gibbs getting home? The ice has melted. And as it's melted, because the temperature has gone up, what we have is a negative Gibbs free energy. And that's what we want to understand. What exactly does that mean when we say there's a negative Gibbs free energy? Because this energy is not coming from the enthalpy change because we've had to add energy in to break bonds. So the energy that's actually powering Mr. Gibbs and letting his boat rise up, all of that work that is happening is not coming from the melting of the ice. The melting of the ice is not going to be releasing this energy, this free energy that Mr. Gibbs is hoping for. It comes from entropy. As the solid block of ice breaks up into liquid particles, the matter in the ice, which is locked into a certain configuration, is now set free and it can occupy lots of different positions. That rearrangement or reconfiguration releases energy that can actually do work, which is basically the solid ice block melting and spreading itself out, getting under the boat and causing the boat to float and get home. That is a huge increase in the spreading out or the chaos, as we say sometimes, or disorder associated with the block of ice. And that rearrangement that comes where the ice is organized and becomes a little bit more disorganized, chaotic, spread out into many more possible situations, then we say it has an increase in entropy and there's a positive delta S. Now, unlike a positive delta H, a positive delta S is a good sign for doing work. And it's very good for powering a spontaneous process. So as the temperature goes up, the ice melts, entropy increases, 
This molecular chaos disorder or spreading out can release energy and do work. And with that in mind, if we then got the actual data with all the units and we plugged it in here for the melting of ice, delta H, the temperature, which was 283 Kelvin, the change in entropy, which can be documented for us as water goes from solid to liquid, we put that in here, based on a certain mass, a certain amount of moles of water and ice, then we will see that this value here will be negative. Gibbs free energy is negative in this situation because the ice melts spontaneously. When the ice was not melting, if we plugged all of the data in, Gibbs free energy would be positive in that situation and we'd have a non-spontaneous process. So this spontaneity or lack of spontaneity or spontaneous or non-spontaneous process has a lot to do with temperature. But not all spontaneous reactions are temperature dependent. Some reactions are independent of temperature, but the melting of ice and the freezing of liquid water are good examples of processes that are spontaneous only at certain temperatures. The reaction of sodium with water, for example, is spontaneous at all temperatures. You can drop a chunk of sodium into water at minus 50 degrees Celsius, it's going to be explosive. Some reactions spontaneous at all temperatures, others only spontaneous at certain temperatures. But we can calculate whether something is spontaneous or not by plugging all of the data in here. And this inevitably is what the IB chemistry student is going to be asked to do in the exam on Monday. So let's connect with the link below this video to one of my older videos and then to a series of questions to practice with this 